What up YouTube, it's your boy Tonkis, back at it again with another cringe inducing tech video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Connor CP-341, which is in fact one of the earliest IDE or integrated drive electronics hard drives to exist. But first, a bit of quick history. I promise this will only take a few moments. Okay. Why can people use to make the controller, controller cards? cards. cards. Also, did you know that according to YouTube statistics, I am lonely. So go subscribe. Western Digital used to make controller cards for big clunky old MFM hard drives, but then one day they thought, hey, why not put the card on the drive itself instead of on the ISA bus? And then they called up a bunch of computer manufacturers like IBM and Compaq and said, hey, what do you think of our funky new idea? And Compaq's just like, sure, we can put that into our portable computers. And so Western Digital gave them a custom version of their controller card that Compaq stuffed onto an existing hard drive and called it a day. But then Compaq said, screw that, let's go for more integration and told Connor, hey, do what Western Digital did, but better. And then the CP-340 series of drives came into existence with only a single board controlling the whole thing instead of WD's piggyback board thing. And done. Alright, so this is the setup that I have been using to do the previous benchmarks. For whatever reason, spin right doesn't exactly seem to like running on this computer though. It might just be because of the age of the hardware in that it's too new for spin right. But anyway, the way that I have things set up is that I just connect the hard drive to the IDE ribbon cable that I normally have connected to this hard drive caddy, which I cannot use because the hard drive is actually too thick to fit into it. So anyway, with that connected, let's browse some files. And I've already checked beforehand. It doesn't seem like there's any sort of like private or personal information on this drive that needs to be like deleted or anything beforehand. Anyway, let's switch over to this. And here we go, we are in Windows 7 and connected to the hard drive. So let's open up Windows Explorer. And the main reason why I'm using Windows 7 over Windows 2000 like I had on that boot menu is... Okay, anyway, this is the drive. And... For the most part, it does look like just a standard DOS installation, but the problem is I have a feeling that someone either formatted and then tried to unformat the drive at some point, or I don't know, something just got corrupted, because a lot of files like these files in the Norton folder, if I just open up with notepad, which normally you aren't supposed to be doing. You can see it got overwritten with some sort of business document talking about sales summary. And I don't think that Norton ever had anything. But either way, the main thing that I wanted to try doing was actually wiping the drive and running some benchmarks with a blank because this drive supposedly can run faster but as seen in the benchmark photos that I put up earlier in the video it doesn't seem to be the case right now and I'm thinking maybe that's because the benchmarking programs like HD Tune, aren't able to create the temporary files they need in order to do the actual benchmarking. I already know that Crystal Disk Mark fails to create the files, and considering how this is a 40 megabyte drive, I don't think that there's very much space to make anything. So yeah, like I said before, I already made a sector for sector 
backup of this drive. All of the information is there. And I don't think that I'm going to be posting this up on uh, archive.org just because even though uh, the drive's contents are corrupted, it does seem like there could be some like important business documents and stuff still on there. But anyway, yeah, 200 kilobytes per second read and just transfer right now. That doesn't feel right, but I'm not sure. Anyway, enough with the rambling. Let's see if Crystal Dismark is able to start this time now that the, the drive is completely empty. Seems to be working. Oh no. Did Did Crystal Dismark seriously just crash? Well, that was unexpected, but Yeah, I guess the read and write speeds haven't gotten any better even after formatting. Okay, so even though it says that's still trying to do a sequential write test, I don't think that it's doing that anymore just because, you know, the program kind of crashed just there. Alrighty, it's finally open. Once again, I'm pretty sure that Windows Update is the reason why Windows 7 is being so slow right now. So let's do the benchmark. It does seem like the transfer rate is continuing to be the 0.2 megabytes per second that was before. And while that's running actually, let me just unmount the phone from the tripod. I want to make a quick note that because the Connor CP340 series was pretty much almost custom ordered in a way by Compact to go into their portable computers. These drives are actually shock mounted. Come on phone, are you really gonna stop focusing now? Okay, but yeah, these are, oh, read error. Okay, yeah, I think it just hit that bad sector. I had to run the, ta the benchmark twice last time. Anyway, as I was saying, these drives are shock mounted on rubber grommets, and if I bend, well, lower the camera like this, you can actually see that the entire drive is elevated from its metal casing. The only points where it touches anything are these four rubber mounts on both sides. Okay, now I put this back onto the tripod. Click OK and let's start it again. Once again, I'm pretty sure that nothing's going to change at this point because of what I saw before in Crystal Disk Mark, but unlike Crystal Disk Mark, HD Tune does not crash when I run it. So. Let's see, it's going to most likely have another massive drop in transfer rate the moment that hits around 
20%, if I remember correctly, because that was where the bad sector was. And... Yeah, I can hardly hear the heads moving in the drive, so it is practically silent. Okay, it's not the 20% mark, it's the 25% mark, okay. Well, it doesn't seem like it's agreeing with the benchmarking right now, but yeah, it this drive does not support smart, so there's nothing on either the info or health tabs aside from just its capacity. Let's just do a error scan instead then. And quick scan and full scan actually takes about the same amount of time just because of how tiny the drive is as far as capacity goes. Like each of these squares is, as it notes, 17 kilobytes. And I guess this can work as a benchmark. It is a read test, though. I don't know. Take it as what you will. The scanning should be hitting the bad sector soon. Any time now. What, did that sector randomly magically disappear? It's not showing up. Oh, there it is. There's the bad sector. Right at the 10 megabyte mark. Oh no, is there a second one now? Oh no, there's a second bad sector now. That's not good. It's spreading. Hopefully this drive doesn't die anytime soon. Two bad sectors. Well, supposedly the Connor formatting tool that I'm planning on using in the next video is supposed to help remap those bad sectors at the very least. So, yeah, we'll see what happens when that happens. I'll just, I don't know, montage the rest of this. There we go. So yeah, that's the error scan. Apparently there's two bad sectors still and scanning speed is the same as benchmark speed, which is about 0.2 megabytes per second. Okay, that's the video. I now have a blank and very old 40 megabyte IDE hard drive in my possession. And next time around, we're gonna try low level formatting it supposedly so yeah that's the video thanks for watching subscribe blah 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 and see ya